Hello, Steady on here, um, and I know I haven't made a tutorial in a while. Uh, I'm going to be making more tutorials, uh, but I've been busy with developing. Welcome all the new subscribers, uh, probably here because of my Bakery Tycoon game. Uh, and I'm making another game soon called Salon Tycoon <laughs> with someone else. Anyway, that's unrelated. So you've seen the title. This is a ti this is a tutorial, sorry, not a tycoon, um, about respawning your character. This can be used for anything. It's also filtering enabled, by the way. This works for filtering enabled. I'll just enable that now. Um, this can be used for anything like a sort of team GUI where you want to click, where you want a player to click the button, and then it teams them into the uh, the team, and then respawns their character, um, or anything you want. So this will be really simple. Um, if you hadn't already noticed, in filtering enabled, um, you can't respawn players without using the server. But this will actually make it a lot easier for you to respawn the player because all you need to do is uh, define the actual function, the uh, remote function, and fire. Actually, sorry, it's a remote event. All you need to do is define the remote event and fire the remote event, and it will respawn your character. So, first, we're going to start off with a script in server script service. I think that's the best place to start with. Um, and we're going to call this respawn character. You can put the content of this script in any. Um, script in, in server script service it doesn't have to be a script called respawn character anything you want uh, ignore my coloring this is just I like my colors like this this is how I've set them so yours won't look like this yours will just be like the default probably unless you change them okay so firstly we're gonna define replicated storage which is uh, this here replicated storage is a storage area between the server and the client so they can both access it they can both edit it um, so you don't want to put anything important here but all we're putting here is a uh, remote event so what we're going to do is we're going to say game get service replicated storage okay and then we're going to call and then we're going to make another variable called um, Actually, what are we going to call it? So this is a respawning thing, so we'll say respawn player. And this is going to be instance. So we're creating a new instance, instance.new, makes sense. And then in the speech marks, we're going to put remote event, because that's what we're creating. And then we're going to say respawn player parent equals replicated storage. And then we can also name it, so respawn player name equals let's call it respawn player okay so let's just quickly show what i've just done so if i go into play mode and i look in replicated storage we've now got a, rep, a remote event called respawn player okay now if you remember rightly replicated storage can be accessed by both the client and the server which means that they can be uh, it can be accessed through both local scripts and server scripts so we go back to this script again Okay, so now we're going to say um, the actual respawning is very simple. I'm just going to say that to start with. Um, but we're going to create a function called function respawn character, because that's what we're actually doing when we're giving them a new character. And then in here we're going to put player, which will be the player object. And all you have to do is say player load character. Literally all you need to do. If you want to make sure that people can't call this, uh, event and respawn other people in the game which wouldn't be very good if you were an exploiter you could do that you can do something like um, if game players find first child oops not find first ancestor find first child player name then and then do player low character so what that actually does is uh, sorry that's not right I did that wrong we, we're actually going to replace this with is if player parent name equals players. So this isn't anything like super secure or anything like that. This is just a tiny bit of security you can add on just to make sure people can't easily fire the remote event and respawn other people in the game because that's just overpowered. And you can do that quite easily with a lot of um, exploits. So now we've got a function to respawn the player. That's all. That's all got, uh, good. We've done that. Um, now we're just going to do the actual calling of the function. So we're just going to say uh, respawn player, which is the remote event we've already defined here. On server event connect 
function. Uh, no, sorry, not connect function. That's not right. Uh, connect respawn character. So what we're actually doing here is we are saying when there's a server event, which means that the client, so the local script, is communicating with the server and saying, I want to do this. Um, so the, this, the, the local script is firing the remote event we've made. Remember the remote event you saw in replicated storage before? Um, and when it does, it will run this function on the argument, on the parameters or a player. Um, and the parameter player is actually automatically transferred through any kind of local uh, communication. Okay, now we've done that. Uh, just for the purpose of the tutorial, we're going to be using a uh, GUI to respawn the player. You can use anything you want. It's a very simple uh, method of how to respawn. So I'll just call this respawn. So you can do this with anything. You can put it in local scripts. You can do anything at all. Um, and I'll just make a text button. Obviously, it's nothing important. I'm not going to have any other GUIs in this game. So I'll just put it in the middle just for the purposes of seeing it properly. Um, and I'll make it a bit bigger so we can see it more. Right. So it's a bit extreme, not really needed, but. <laughs> We're not using this game for anything else, so just for the purpose of the tutorial, this is going to be a massive button. Okay, right. I've made it a bit smaller because I was a bit extreme. Right. Um, so just quickly make that source sounds bold. I like source sounds bold. It's a nicer font. Okay. So now we've made this respawn button. All we're going to want to do is make a local script. Uh, where's the local script? There we go. Um, and obviously. Depending on how you're using this, if you're already, uh, well, how would you say, if you're already familiar with basic scripting, you can incorporate this into your scripting, your script, sorry, just watch what I'm doing, it's very simple, and you'll be able to do it really easily yourself, okay? Right, so I'm going to name this script respawn, and we're going to make a parameter, I mean a variable, sorry, uh, called replicated storage uh, and that's going to be once again game get service replicated storage storage got that wrong okay and then we're going to say uh, local event look actually I'll make it local respawn event just in case in your script you're doing something else as well uh, I can't actually remember what we called this player it was I think it was uh, replicated storage so we're doing replicate storage, wait for child. So the reason we do that is because the server script is putting it into the game, but there might be a bit of server lag, so we don't want to just look for it immediately, and then if it's not there, it'll error, and the script won't work. So what we're actually doing is we're just waiting for it to appear in replicate storage. So wait for child, and the name, I think, is player respawn. Oh, maybe it's respawn player. I think it's respawn player, actually. I think that was the name. I hope it's the name. <laughs> okay, then all we're going to do is we're going to say, in this case, because we're clicking, because it's every time you click you want to respawn, what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we're going to add one more variable actually, we're going to say button equals script parent text button, button, mouse button one, click, connect, function, so we're just making a function here, and then all we're going to do is we're going to say respawn event fire. So we're going to want to do. Actually, I think we have to say fire server. Uh, yes, we do. Okay. So hopefully this works. If it doesn't work, we can fix that. It's all about that's that's what happens in scripting. Stuff doesn't work. You have to fix it. Okay. Respawn works perfectly. That's good actually. That never normally happens. So thanks for watching. This has been a respawning tutorial uh, in filtering enabled games. Uh, I've been studying on. Watch some of my other videos. I'll be making more videos in the future. Leave a comment down below on. Uh, what I should make in the future. Sorry this video was a bit long. I like to make sure I'm talking about everything and making sure everyone understands exactly what's going on so I can, you know, make sure. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching.